Hello, my name is Sue Davis, and this is a short introduction to key performance indicators or KPIs in museums. This presentation will explain the factors that you should consider when creating KPIs and then how to use them effectively. It's been created as part of the Data Driven Museum project, which was funded by Share Museums East, and it uses images from museums across the east of England. Performance indicators are tools to monitor and measure progress towards aims and objectives. You may have many performance indicators, but you should only have a few key performance indicators. KPIs help to focus attention on what matters most. In museums, apart from visitors in person, there's very little agreement on what KPIs should be. One of the difficulties in setting universal KPIs is that museums are so different. The priorities of a small volunteer run museum are not the same as those of a large national museum. Another challenge is that some of the most important aspects of museums are really hard to measure. Without sensible KPIs though, how can we know if the museum is performing well? You may not always be able to set the KPIs, but when you do have the opportunity, there are a number of factors that you should consider. First, good KPIs are clearly connected to the aims and objectives of whatever it is you're doing. If you're running a project that aims to reduce a cataloging backlog, then you need a KPI that shows progress towards that. For instance, the number of new records created or the number of finished records that are published online. Just because you can count something doesn't mean that you should. Start by identifying what is important, the stuff that tells you if you're achieving your aims and look for creative ways to capture what you're doing. If your project's about improving well-being, you're going to need some qualitative feedback. Just counting participants will only get you so far. Explore tools that convert subjective experiences into quantifiable data. Be consistent in how you collect information, whether it's the number of inquiries, the visits to the website or followers on social media. Make sure that you can compare one month's data with another's. KPIs are not an end product and there may be complicated ways to quantify the value of what you're doing. But if the effort in capturing the value is excessive, you might opt to use simpler but less accurate indicators. You have to use your judgment. So once you've established meaningful KPIs, make sure that you use them well. Use KPIs to set realistic targets. Guard against optimism bias. It's great to be ambitious, but setting unrealistic targets is demoralizing. Don't set targets at the start of the year and not check on progress until the end. Keep an eye on them, especially the leading indicators. Those are the ones that tell you what's likely to happen next. If the results are not what you'd hoped for, take action, work out why, make improvements. If the targets are completely unobtainable, then you need to explain why and persuade the decision makers to change them. Find ways to present the data in a way that stakeholders can understand and discuss them with the delivery team as well as decision makers. Celebrate milestones and goals achieved. Don't underestimate the motivational power of knowing that you're contributing to a joint project. So to conclude, a good KPI is one that focuses on aims and objectives. It measures what's meaningful, it uses standard units to allow for comparison, and it isn't too hard to collect. And then make the most of those KPIs. Use them to set realistic targets, monitor them and respond, share them with stakeholders, and find, them, find moments to celebrate. Good luck.